The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. This book is cool. Welcome to This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Judah, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We have a very fun book to explore today. It's called Dinosaurs Big and Small. It was written by Kathleen Widener Zofeld. We have a special guest with us today, a guest from the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature, we have Education Director, Tish Sachs. Hi, Tish. Hi, how are you? Glad to I'm be here. Terrific, and I'm so happy to have you here today to talk to us about dinosaurs. And just looking at your background makes me excited <laughs> to have this conversation. Yeah, we have all kinds of skeletons. We don't have dinosaurs, but we do have a lot of old fossils. And uh, the fossil behind me is a sloth bear, which lived in Florida during the, the Ice Age, so. Wow. <laughs> it kind of looks like it's eating my head, but it is not. It does a little bit look like that, but it's fascinating to, to see. And now I see on the other side, is that what we think the animal looked like? What's right on the other side are llamas, paleo llamas. Wow. Um, people think of llamas as being South American, but they used to live in Florida. So... It's so, so fun. fascinating to um, discover things. I love books like Dinosaurs Big and Small that are nonfiction books that give us a lot of information and teach us things that perhaps we didn't know previously. What's one of the things that you think makes this book really cool? Well, I think the first most cool thing about it is just the title. It says Dinosaurs Big and Small, because people a lot of times think of dinosaurs as all being huge, but of course they weren't. They came in different sizes, just like animals today come in different sizes. So I think that's super cool about it, and I love the, the title. And I have to say that I was one of those people who thought that all dinosaurs were big. So reading this book really gave me some interesting knowledge about smaller dinosaurs that I had never discovered before. It, of course, we love to talk about the big ones like Diplodocus, which was the unbelievable size. But I also love that they measure them in elephants, right? They measure them in the number of elephants. And that gives us a great way to sort of relate and remember that you can measure in anything, but it's, it's nice to have a, a unit that you pick. So I love that they measure in elephants. And, and also for the length of some dinosaurs, I, I know they, they said, you know, imagine a school bus and this particular right. dinosaur was longer than three school buses. And right, right. that was very uh, helpful to give us a picture because these creatures lived millions of years ago. Over 65 million years ago, all the way back to over 250 million years ago. And that's, that's really a long time. They were on Earth longer than humans have been on Earth so far. I also love that they remind us that some dinosaurs ate plants and some dinosaurs ate meat, just like animals today. And they had a whole ecosystem, just like we have animals that have ecosystems today. So I think that's a fun thing that the book highlights. One of the things that I've noticed is that children have a great fascination with dinosaurs. I've, I've had some younger nieces and nephews that by the time they were six years old, they knew the names of all the different kinds of dinosaurs, and some of them even knew how to spell it. And I would imagine in your position as director of education at the bishop, that you encounter an awful lot of children who are fascinated by dinosaurs. What do you think piques their interest? That's a really good question. And you're right that they do love dinosaurs. They love, I think children love animals in general. And so when you're talking about an animal that's big and powerful and mysterious, and I do think that kids love to be able to pronounce those 
animal, those complicated dinosaur names and think how smart it makes you feel when you can say a big word, but then when you take the word apart, it has meaning. So like seismosaurus is just, seismo means big and rumbly, right? So that was so big that it made the ground shake when it walked. So I think kids love to play with that language and those big words and, and have that mysterious animal with them. So I think it's really fun when you have a book that you can pick out those words and have fun with them. It is. So what started you in this career path? When, when did you know that science was going to be very important to you? Well, both my parents were scientists. My dad was a chemist and they always did science at home. We used to go out and look at the stars. My mom worked in a museum. It's kind of funny. I have come full circle because now I have the same job that my mom had. So when I was a little kid, I was always at the museum, running around, looking at rocks, looking at fossils, and having people talk to me about that. So we were doing science at home. We loved to go out. My dad and I used to love to go out and walk in the woods and walk in parks around us. My parents even built a telescope in our basement <laughs> that we used to use. So yeah, we were always doing science and it just is kind of part of my DNA, I think. That's so. wonderful. So now in your career choice, you have surrounded yourself once again with science. It must feel kind of like coming home to you. It really is. I mean, I feel super comfortable at the museum and I love it when people come to the museum. And I love that moment when people come in and kids go, oh, wow, and they start to kind of vibrate. I love that. I love to get people excited about the different things that we have, like the swath bear behind me and our mastodon. And we do have some dinosaur footprints. You got to find them, but you got to look for them in the museum. Oh, them. my goodness. Well, well yeah. you've, you've piqued know. my interest. I, I've been to the bishop many times, but I don't know that I've ever specifically looked for the dinosaur footprints, but I will the next time I'm there. Yeah, we don't have a lot because one other cool thing that this book mentions is that it identifies what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur. And one of the things is it, a dinosaur has lived on land. They didn't swim, right? They stood upright and walked on land. And Florida, when dinosaurs were around, we were covered with water. So we didn't have dinosaurs. So I love that part about this book because it really is, that's real science that's going on there. It is. I, I loved looking at all of the pictures of the different dinosaurs and some of the pictures that made us realize how huge the, the dinosaurs yes. were. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us today and, and helping pique our interest to learn more about dinosaurs in this book and learn more about science by visiting the Bishop Museum of Science and yeah, Nature. Yeah, we love it if people came. It's, we always, and we love it when people ask questions. I know many children will gain even more of a love for science through all of the work that you do, and I hope that they keep reading nonfiction books. Definitely, love those science books for sure. Thanks for having us. So you can see how they use a stack of elephants to equal the weight of this one dinosaur. Very clever, our author. Also, she was clever by putting great words in the book that we're going to add to our word bank. The first word for our word bank is the word snout. Snout. Snout is the projecting nose and mouth of an animal. Our next word is the word measure. Measure. To measure is to ascertain the size, amount, or degree of something. Our next word is the word lumbering. Lumbering. That means moving in a slow, heavy, or awkward way. Our next word for our word bank is the word herbivore. Herbivore. That actually starts with the letter H. An herbivore is an animal that feeds on plants. And our final word for the word bank is the word hatched. Hatched. Hatched means to open and produce a small animal. Eggs hatch. Now, many of the dinosaur 
eggs were much larger than the eggs that we might get in the grocery store. Wouldn't it be fun to hatch a dinosaur egg? Our activity this week is going to give you a chance to hatch a dinosaur egg. We've created some dinosaur eggs. And we created these by using a special kind of clay that dries and gets very, very hard. This kind of clay also dissolves when you use vinegar around it. So you can create a dinosaur egg and then pretend you're a paleontologist by spraying vinegar and slowly un unveiling what's inside the egg. Now, if you don't have patience to do it layer by layer, you can just break it open and see what's inside. So all of these pieces fit together and inside we had a little dinosaur. It's really fun to pretend to have a different profession, pretending to be a paleontologist looking for dinosaur fossils, an archaeologist looking for remnants of when people used to be alive many, many years ago. It's fun to pretend to be any kind of a profession, really. We'd like you to tell us what kind of profession you think you'd like to have as you get older. Send us that information. You can send it to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. Or if you create your own dinosaur egg and you crack it open, show us what's inside. You can send those pictures to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. We've had a lot of people send us pictures of different things that they've done over the summer. We're going to share a couple of those with you right now. Remember, keep reading. Reading is the key to succeeding. Until we meet again, my friends. Bye for now.